Welcome everyone to this video on JK flip-flop asynchronous inputs. Uh, in previous videos we've talked about the synchronous inputs to flip-flop such as the gate J and the K inputs. So we have uh, the J and the K inputs that are controlled by the actual clock input. However, with the asynchronous inputs, then we can uh, uh, either set the Q output of the flip-flop or clear the Q output of the flip-flop, regardless of the condition of the clock. These inputs are uh, active low, indicated by the inverter or bubble um, on each one of the inputs. What this simply means is that for whatever value Q is that I can set it to a 1 or clear it to a 0 by bringing these inputs low. For example, if in the set input I have a waveform that is active high and then I bring it low momentarily and then bring it back high, then that has the action of clearing the Q output or setting the Q output rather. For example, if the Q output had started off at zero, then at this activation of the set input, then the output would have gone high and remained high. Same similar situation occurs with the asynchronous clear input. So if I have a clear input that is high and then is brought low momentarily and then returned back high, then the Q output, let's assume that it started off high, then at the occurrence of the clear pulse, then it will be driven back low and remain low for the, until another action takes place. Thus, the synchronous inputs, the set and the clear, can be used either to set or clear the Q outputs. And notice here that there's no relationship to the clock. The clock has nothing to do with these. This concludes the video on the JK flip-flop asynchronous inputs.